description and description of some collection of data. So we take data from a sample and would like to sort of make some informed judgments from that about a population. So we're describing performance over some time distribution. This is usually enumerative data. And in this case, the, that data is going to be a summary of what happened within a particular period of time. So we're describing it with statistics. That would include the mean and the median and mode, these sorts of descriptions. The second type of statistics is called inferential statistics. And these techniques are used to infer or predict properties of a large collection of data based on observations of a small sample of data. So if we want to estimate the change in performance in some sort of uh, uh, performance area or some factor, what we will do is take a look at the time distribution and then summarize that not in overall periods but in short increments and then see how is it changing in respect to time. This is called analytical data analysis. And so we see the enumerative data analysis is a summary of a group of statistics that have been collected over time. And the inferential is predicting based on a small sample what we would expect to see in an analytical way from that data. Now we talk about statistical process management. We begin by understanding, first of all, what are the critical parameters we need to measure? And then we have to have some sort of system for understanding how we collect that data and some sort of tolerances within which we believe it should be performing. We have to properly measure that data and then effectively monitor it and then make sure we get feedback loops to keep it within those reasonable tolerance bands. So this is the objective that we have with, with all of the statistical data that we want to use to manage and control a process. Now when we talk about this average, we see that there are three different calculations we have there. One is the mean, that's the arithmetic average. The second is the median, and the third is the mode. And what we see is we want to be able to understand what is actually happening in performance, not just on average, but in each instance of that performance. And so what we want to be able to do is get the best viewpoint we can about the performance of the data in time. Now to do this, we're going to take a look at a particular type of, of process uh, tool. It's called the statistical process control chart. The typical instance of this that we will use is called the individuals chart. And as you can see from the graphic, the individuals chart is actually blending these two perspectives. It's taking the time series data, real-time data, which is understanding of the behavior of process performance, and it's also taking the distribution perspective, where we see a summarized approach where we understand what's happening over this collection of period of time, which is enumerative performance. And what we're going to do is we're going to overlay the time series data on top of the enumerative or distribution data. And this gives us this process behavior perspective. And so in this process behavior perspective, what we see is the green line at the center is the average of the observations. The red lines above and below are what are called upper and lower control limits. They're plus or minus three standard deviations. And so this is the summary of all the statistics that we have observed. Now notice in the center what we have is this time series perspective. So each of the time increments is divided there. And what we also see is that there are some red dots here in this process. And these represent unusual behavior patterns based on observing the data. Now there's different types of behavior patterns that we can see. One of them is called excessive variation. This is when we have more variation than we would be expecting to see from a particular distribution. A second we see is trend in performance. These are sequential observations in data that are either escalating or decrementing the level of historically expected performance. So if performance is going on, it goes up, or if performance is going, and it goes down. We can also see a shift in performance. Here's where the regular observations of the performance coming across a process all of a sudden move in a significant enough manner that we see that the new level of performance is significantly higher or lower than it had been in the past. Another pattern is oscillation. So oscillation is when we're seeing data moving up and down, up and down in a regular pattern. And this instability in observations may indeed indicate the potential that we have a compound probability distribution as we're getting information perhaps from one supplier, second supplier, one supplier, second supplier, and so forth, and that there is some underlying uh, uh, capability going on in terms of the data that we have to understand where is that pattern coming from. 
final pattern we have is excessive regularity. And this happens when the line is just flat, it's stable. And what we don't see is we don't see any natural variation. And this typically can indicate that we don't have really a measurement system that's capable of actually giving us good performance readings. In other words, it's not able to detect the natural variation in a particular process. And if it can't detect that base level of variation, what we see is that it's not going to be able to detect the change very well at all. Now, when we use these control charts, what we want to see is a combination of things uh, that tell us, is the control chart good? So the control chart should be used in terms of process management to understand the process changes. But we should also do capability studies with them to find out, are they actually within the specification limits that we're guaranteeing to our customers? So we have upper level control limits in the chart, but the specification limit should be well outside of that. So that when we're monitoring the performance, we're never doing anything that would violate the uh, pledge of quality that we have given already to our, our particular customers. Standard operating procedures should be used to describe how those charts are going to be actually monitored and used and what would be an actionable level of performance change or pattern shift that would tell the operators we have to do something to adjust the performance of this process. So decisions on adjusting the process should be based on sound process characteristics, understandings that come out of something like a greenbelt study of the process. And when we see these root cause, or, excuse me, these red dots coming out of Minitab, those are pattern variations, something that says it's not just regularly happening, we have to do something. And the root cause of those control to, out of control conditions should be what we're investigating as we're looking at the process as the, through the eyes of a greenbelt type of problem. Now, what would be considered unusual? So we can see also that we have observations of data where we see positive change, but we also may see that what's called a false positive. So false positive is where we have a naturally occurring phenomenon that's outside of those upper and lower control limits. Now, how often will that happen? Well, there's a formula for this, as there is for most things, I guess. And it's called for the average run length. And the question is, how long can a process go with a particular probability of detecting at some quality level, plus or minus three standard deviations, before we'll actually get a naturally occurring red dot showing excessive variation? Well, the answer, as you can see here, is that it's one over alpha. And alpha for this control chart with three sig sigma is equal to 0 0.0027. And that means it's one out of 370 observations. So what I would expect to see, if I see about 370, say 400 observations, I would expect to see one red dot saying it's excessive variation. No cause to panic. If I have a thousand of them, I should expect to see two and perhaps even three. If I have 10,000, maybe 20. And so we have to then keep in mind that there is this false detection rate that charts will give us in some of these red dots coming up in terms of, of what's going on. So the, the mini tab tests in data always select this basic test for excessive variation. And we have to remember, what do we actually see? When it's more than one in 370 detected failures, then we say we're going beyond the expected level. Now we can add additional pattern tests to that. There's uh, seven other pattern tests Minitab can check. And what they're doing is sort of like a hypothesis test. Every time new data is collected, it's run through Minitab and says, are any of these patterns evident in the data that we just observed? And we can then see how the process behavior is changing over time based on the patterns that are detected. We can also see that we can segment data differently and, and start understanding how the subgroups of performance have changed over time. So let's just say we have one process and it's going to be doing different types of products. And so we can actually set up what's called stages and in each of those distinct subgroups by product, see how is the process performing. And so Minitab will then calculate the performance relative to each of those areas and we'll see new levels of control limits and averages uh, calculated by Minitab within each of the particular stages which relates to the rational subgroup of the product type that's being produced. Now, what we want to do is actually manage this type of system. And the next thing we, we want to talk about is how do we actually have 
more learning coming, but taking these ideas of statistical process management and putting them into the analytics by which we're going to go judge the quality of a process.